I want you to see the mentality of the devil and the demons that you're dealing with. They don't have a problem as long as you continue worshiping God, as long as you are not in your rightful place. They demanded that we sing a song, yes, worship God, praise him for who he is. And then we said, how can we do that? Because this place is not ours. It was never given to us by God. It is your place, not our place. So they refused to sing a song. They said, we'll keep the song, we'll reserve the song until we get to our rightful place and then we'll worship God. <laughs> that is the mentality of the devil. He wants you to worship God where you are right now. It sounds so good. There are statements that were uttered as we were growing up that we should have never had. Which are the main cause of the many problems that we are undergoing right now. Very nice statements which sound to be spiritual and yet they are just religious. I've heard people say there are certain people that only come to God because of what they can get from God. Certain people are coming to God, they are worshiping God because of what God can offer to them. It sounds so good. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to look into all these things. This is a wrong statement. I've never come across a person who worships God with no intention of getting anything from him. Never. I've never. Because if that is true, if there is any person who has come to God worshiping God just because of who he is and not because of what he can get from God, then it means that even your salvation is questionable. Because the first thing that you realized is that you were a sinner. And your own blood could not wash your own sins. And you looked on Jesus and you realized that he was in possession of a commodity that you were in need of. And then you approached God because of what you could get from God. I've never met a person who has ever come to God for any other reason apart from receiving from God? We are here to receive. We are here to get. I am here to collect from God. That is a Babylonian mentality. If you listen to such words, there's a time when you begin to feel guilty when you're asking God for anything. You feel like you're doing the wrong thing. I shouldn't be asking every time. Why should I be asking every time? I should just be praising God for who he is. But if you are praising God for who he is, you are praising him because he's a giving God. He's a caring God. He's a loving God. He's a providing God. That's who he is. If you are coming to God, you are coming to God because he is offering salvation. Salvation that you cannot offer for yourself. You are coming to get. You are, you are coming to get from God. I want to clear this before we even move any further. If you need anything from God, it is your right. Okay? God is your father. He has to supply. He has to take care of you. He manufactured you. He created you. He owns you. It is your right to receive from God. Am I talking to somebody? Okay. Any person that you hear saying, we don't come to God to receive, it means that person is not even born again. Keep that, please. Keep that in mind. If I'm going to worship God simply because of who he is, 
and not because of what he can offer to me. What makes him different from me? What makes him different if he is a God without a place, a heaven? If he is a God without a blessing? If he is a God without benefits? What makes him different from me? Look at this. All these statements, it's an attempt to make you sing a song. Worship God from wherever you are. Now, look at this now. Something very, very strong here. I'm not saying there is anything wrong if you, if you are in a place and you want to praise God, you want to worship Him for what He has done for you so far. It doesn't mean that you have to perish, you have to end there. Listen. When I say thank you, God, for where I am, for what I have, I'm not saying it's enough. No. I have to know that. God has to know that. Even the devil has to know that. If I say thank you, God, I'm not saying it's enough. No. I need more than what I have now. And it's not greedy. I need more than what I have now because I have more people to help, more people to bless. Listen to me now. So we can worship God and thank him for what he has done so far. But it doesn't have to end there. You see the problem with the enemy, the problem with the taskmaster. They didn't demand a song as the Israelites were marching towards their promised land. No. The enemy made them to sit. Thanking God on your way to your blessing or on your way to your prosperity, that is the right way to go about it. You have to continuously thank God and appreciate him, but as you walk, not as you sit. They made us to sit, which means you have to become established in that place where you don't belong and you begin to worship God from there. And your father worshiped God from that same wrong place. And you are also worshiping God from that same wrong place. Because all of you in your generation, you were made to sit first. And you began worshiping God in a wrong place. They made us to sit. I'm looking for somebody who will say, I will not sit where I don't belong. There is always a place where if you begin to worship God from there, worshiping God becomes exciting. I know some of you might want to say, ah, no, you see, I can worship God from anywhere, any place. It's suitable for me. Listen to me. God is concerned about the place. He's a God of places. If he's not concerned about you being in the right place, he wouldn't have bothered our grandfather Abraham, moving him from one place. He said, come out of this place to a place that I'm going to show you. And the main purpose why God moved him from one place to another, God wanted Abraham to worship him. And that's the first thing that you see Abraham doing when he got to the right place. He worshiped God. Worshiping God, God who is omnipresent. He is still in the air of the Chaldeans. But yet God said you cannot sing a song in a foreign land. You have to move from where you are. A place of poverty is not designed for you. Am I talking to somebody here? 